is the volatility, uh, complexity, and ambiguity. The question is, where are we going as a society? But in most cases, the question that we don't ask is, what is my own role in terms of where we have been, where we are, and where we are going? And I think as public servants here, that's the issue that we need to uh, consider. So let me briefly define what a developmental state is. A, a developmental state is a state that its own existence is determined by the quest to develop the, the, the quality of life of its citizens, either individually or collectively. Uh, so some people call it an interventionist state, but I think that's slightly different. A developmental state from your ideological stance, how you arrange your governance systems, the way that you lead your ethical conduct and morality, uh, your adherence to transparency and accountability, and whether you're a pro productive state, that determines your level of a developmental state. So in most cases, it, many people define a developmental state in terms of how the, the, the government builds the economy. With the South African scenario, it's a different case. Your role as part of a developmental state is to correct the, the apartheid legacy, to make sure there's social justice, to make sure there's social cohesion, to make sure that there's nation building, to ensure that there's transformation. That, that is the, the complete vision of what in a, in a South African developmental context, the South African developmental state is. So defined, it's a state which is conceptually rooted on the quest to progressively advance the socioeconomic condition of its citizens, both individually and collectively. So in other words, even if you were to grow this economy by 10%, but you continue to have persistent inequality, poverty, and unemployment, then you are not advancing a developmental agenda. It's not enough to say that the, the, the state is able to grow the economy by 10%. The change in the, quali the progressive quali quality of life of the citizens is what determines wh whether the state is developmental uh, or not. So I must take these services. I got this picture from Nico. I don't know where he got it. But some of this non-capacity oriented, you can find them in the public, in the, in the public set. So what, what is a capable state? These are the characteristics of a capable state. It has to be efficient, which means you in your work, you must do everything that has to be done efficiently. Uh, it has to be done effectively. There must be some meaningful outcomes for what you do. It has to be responsive, which basically means that if, there's some, if there are citizens somewhere in Soweto that require particular services, the state must be able to respond uh, with immediacy and timelessly. And then the issue uh, of uh, productivity. I, I think that Anna Vukel and some of your work, you covered that uh, pretty well. So in most cases, people will say that you can't have a product, you can't talk about productivity in the public sector because productivity is defined by profit making. So if you work for Coca-Cola, you determine whether Coca-Cola is productive by the number of the cans that they sell and the profit that they make. But in the public sector, you don't have to follow that formula. In the public sector, your quality of service determines whether a state is productive or not. So if you are going to be at a bus stop and wait for a public transport for an hour, the Department of Transport is not productive. It's as simple as that. You go to a clinic, you, 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 you wait for two hours before you see a doctor. Even when you see a doctor, he doesn't have a panado or a stethoscope. I can't pronounce that thing. Stethoscope, that thing, yeah. If, if, the, if you don't have those basics, then that clinic, that public health is not productive. So how quickly, how efficient and efficiently you do your work in relation to the citizen? determines the productivity of the state institution. So 
In the past, it used to take us two, hour, two, two, two months to get an ID from Home Affairs. Then Home Affairs was not productive. These days, a week, probably it's enough. They even send you uh, a message to say that you can come get it. So, so there is productivity in the public service. It does not have to be defined by profits, but the quality and substance of the service must adhere to these particular norms and standards that define what the citizen must expect in interaction with the state. So what is a, okay, we have spoken about a capable state, uh, now here is a capable bureaucracy. It, the, the sum total of a bureaucrat is what you see there. Your, your ability to think and do strategic development, your ability to from your strategy to generate projects, to conceptualize projects, uh, to do project management, operational planning, performance, all of those particular things. They, de they define whether you are a capable bureaucrat or not. And one of the things that we usually do is to avoid reflecting on ourselves on these issues and the drive expectation from the next person. It is very common that you will find even chief directors who don't even think that they are leaders, but they are. They define themselves as managers. The same applies to DDGs. In fact, the notion of a leader, of a leader among bureaucrats is foreign. But it is a, it's a necessary phenomenon. Unless you, if you are going to think of yourself as a manager, you will just control, 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 control. But what you need is to lead and manage. Uh, that, that is why modern organizations uh, do. So what is the state of service delivery? There, there you are. So if you are from Limpopo, I sincerely apologize. The, 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 <laughs> the first time we came across this, we were talking about state capacity issues in Limpopo, but this is not in isolation to Limpopo. We can go to the Northwest and we'll find this trend. So what, what's written on the van? We guarantee fast service no matter how long it takes. <laughs> Those are not your norms and standards. That, that, that's not how a public servant, a bureaucrat, is supposed to operate. You, you, you can't be too casual with the lives of people. Uh, I mean, look at that. It says, this road is so potholed, you need to be drunk to drive in a straight line, which is very true. But th these are our daily experiences. But I think the horrible part is we don't usually fit ourselves in this establishment. We don't see ourselves, we don't ask ourselves what is our own particular role as bureaucrats in this type of, of, of service, of lack of service delivery. Okay. Look at those, you know, beautiful women there. Highly at risk of being caught by crocodiles. If they are not caught by crocodiles, the water itself is very parasitic. It's dirty. And then you, you, you will drive from your cities and visit them with your savanna and other stuff, hoping they'll be excited. This is an unfortunate daily experience. Look at that, even there, even there where there's a, where do, is it possible to light this thing or am I too advanced for this thing? Even where there's a tap, eh, Tatana Vukele, there is, there's no clear, actually the tap is cleaner than the water. I'll prefer the other way around. But colleague, this is the state, this is the state of service delivery. So this is why, uh, Mabunda, I, I, I like that theme with those, those horrible things because that's the state of our service delivery. It's great that you, you know, Renisha, you guys did not decide, uh, what's the word, to chocolate coat the situation because that's the situation that, that um, we are in. 
Okay. Here's a state of disaster. So part of, if you check my topic there, it has to deal partly with the state of disaster. And there are three types of disasters, by the way. One is natural disasters, as uh, our colleagues from KZN will tell us. Uh, there are lots of natural disasters in, 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 in KZN. M maybe we need to, to slaughter where Shaga was buried, you know? just to cleanse the place. And then there are man-made disasters. And you, you can see, ESCOM, but it's not only ESCOM, it's also the lack of housing, water and sanitation, and all those kinds of issues. And uh, there are some disasters that are hybrid. They are both natural and man-made. And I've realized this is the term that no one wants to touch its gender orientation, man-made disasters. You'll never hear women on top arguing that we must adjust that one. It's man-made. Okay, so, so here are some of the things that will happen if you have got a situation where there's a failure of service delivery. Uh, one, of course, will have um, a restless society. When people don't get services, when people can go around their livelihood, when people are unemployed, they resort to all sorts of things. But over time, they become restless against the state. Uh, you have a population that suddenly loses trust in the democratic establishment because they don't see the gains. So, so if it, even if you look at a whole lot of transformation agendas, you will realize that the haves that used to have pre-94 are still the most beneficiary. Uh, and then you, you have loss of faith in democracy and you, ha you get a heightened risk of unrest simply because things are not working out for the majority. Okay? And then what does the political leadership does? It declares uh, a state of disaster. Remember that some of these are man-made. So we participate in the making of the disaster. After a few years, we declare a state of disaster on the condition